Hey everyone, welcome to Know Your Gear, Q, know your gear <laughs> QA number 55. Uh, and as always, we always do the shout out to the friends who make this happen. Uh, we're going to start off with the original crew. It's uh, Bradulist, Jeff Howes, Zachary Rowe, Michael Newman, Bruce Garris, Hannah Gunson, John Jex, Michael Shy, Justin Mabe, David Madison, Lawrence Petros, uh, or Petros from LPD Pedals. Uh, he says I can say it either way, but I think it's officially Petros. So that's how he says it. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the second crew, Bob Pickwood, uh, Tim, uh, no no last name, just Tim, uh, John Levitt, uh, or Leave It, John Leave It. I'm going to say Leave It. Uh, Space Jazz, Alvaro, and Luis from Pedal Pal FX. Thank you guys so much, like everyone else that hung out with me yesterday uh, for the uh, Patreon hangout on the first of every month. Um, Ricky Robinson, James Biles, Chuck Keen, Chris Glaze, Dylan87, Jonathan Pickering, Joe Watson, Brent O'Dell, and Ross from Taurus Pedals, and of course the newcomer, uh, Michael Lidner. Uh, so thank you everyone, and plus everyone else on the entire list. As you can see, it's super long, and I appreciate all of, all of you guys uh, supporting me and supporting what we do here and hanging out. So let's get started, because uh, it was a crazy week. So I want to start seeing what you guys have got to say, because boy, I might have more questions for you you guys this week than you have for me uh the um uh, uh but let's see okay so a couple things uh i'm gonna give you guys uh some sh uh some sh shout outs i guess or shout outs information uh let's say maybe some uh some comments and uh you guys can maybe let me know what you think uh so uh first i want to uh, start off with a question because that's always what we do here and, uh, and it's from Thomas, and Thomas put this question in. Thank you, Thomas, before this uh, live stream even started. Thomas said, should I take out my circuit board in my Les Paul studio and rewire the controls? Um, when they say, should you take it out, in other words, is there going to be an improvement if you you know go to a better better electronics? Uh, I don't know if you'd be able to hear it. Me personally, if uh, I would wait till something breaks unless you really just want to do it. But my suggestion would be, yeah, take it out. Uh, that's what I would do. So I'll just give you the advice of what I would do. I take it out and rewire everything to the the old way, the way I like it. Um, and you can buy a kit uh, from that, you know, to do that, or you can do it yourself. It's a very straightforward thing to to wire up. Uh, but that's the the only reason I would say not to is, of course, if there's nothing wrong with your guitar and you have any you don't have any complaints about the way it sounds or feels, uh, you know, wait for something to break and then be prepared to do it. But uh, I've always done it to all the Les Pauls I've got that have circuits. Uh, Pete Johnson said, cheers, Phil, with a super chat. I appreciate that, Pete. I have some good news for you today, so that'll be cool. And uh, Shannon McCoy did another super chat, too. So m I want to hold off on, on the announcement that's going to involve the super chats in a second. Um, but um, but uh, we'll, we'll hit some more questions, and then we'll talk about uh, all the crazy things going on in the guitar world this week. Good and bad. A lot of good, a lot of bad. So we'll see. How it goes. Let me dim this down a little bit. All right. Um, let's see if that's better. Eh, a little better. Okay. Okay. So Scott's got a question. It says, hey, Phil, first time watching your uh, the show live, uh, even though I'm at work. All right, man, make sure you're, you're doing your work too. Uh, I usually have to watch it after it's done. Uh, love what you do. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. And uh, always learn something uh, watching. I appreciate that so much as well. Um, and uh, thank you. Well, that's uh, very nice of you. Ian uh, did a super chat and he says, what are your favorite pickups for tellies? Um, you know, the the I can tell you the pickups I'm using in my uh, my surf green telly. I'm using the Billy Gibbons uh, uh, pickup in the bridge, which is a stacked single coil. So it's basically a stacked humbucker. And it's a really high output, really forceful pickup. And when I say high output, it doesn't overdrive the amp, but it's huge. It's It sounds as big as a humbucker, but it's got that Telecaster, uh, you know, kind of twang to it. And I had trouble matching it to a neck pickup. So I contacted uh, Seymour Duncan and talked to Custom Shop and they made me a Billy Gibbons neck pickup. So uh, it's the Billy. So I, that's the set I'm using. Other than that, um, I like a lot of the vintage style pickups uh, for tellies. But believe it or not, uh, because of the Sharp, Sharp and My Axe series uh, and companies want to be involved with that, I have a bunch of pickups downstairs for all kinds of companies that want to be involved in me uh, modding up guitars. So um, we're going to be learning a lot about the, some of the pickups that are out there. So it was really cool of the companies to kind of send some product uh, for us to use so that some, some people out there can get some cool stuff. Um, uh, 
Damien says, hey, Damien Autry says, hey, what are my thoughts on fan fretted guitars? You know, um, I, I've played a lot of them. Uh, the one I really like, obviously, is this is the Strandberg, uh, a really good friend of mine, Matt. I did a video with him. We did the boss pedal review. Uh, Matt is a phenomenal player. He plays a couple Strandberg guitars. I, I really like that fan fret system, you know. Um, I just kept trying to talk myself into a seven or eight string and I just couldn't do it. So I always thought about maybe six string. They actually build those locally here, the U.S. ones. So I'm hoping to go and see them and check them out and uh, see what that kind of, you know, gets the fire started. So we'll see. But uh, overall, I like fan frets. Um, they're they're really cool. I like the I like the actually you know what it's the fan frets. I don't have any problem playing with them. Uh, I, I like the way they play. But uh, I really like the idea of this uh, the the multi scale system. You know what I mean? Having a longer scale on the uh, low strings and a shorter scale on the high strings. It seems to make a lot of sense. Um, but I know some people have a problem with them. I've just never had a problem. They always play. I always play fine. I just pick them up and play. Uh, Cannon Lawrence uh, did a super chat. Hey Phil, any experience with uh, Fargen amps? Uh, yeah, I've played a couple Fargen amps. Uh, I like them. If you guys aren't familiar with Fargen amps, they're uh, generally speaking the ones I've ever experienced. I haven't experienced any others. They're Marshall type clones, and Fargen actually makes a really impressive uh, Plexi clone that's a low wattage that I'm really a fan of. So. Um, there you go. So that's what I can tell you. So pretty cool guys. I understand. I mean, Fargen is, is a, he's building them himself. I don't think it's like a big company or anything. It's just a small shop, this guy building them stuff. So everyone I played sounds fantastic. Uh, gas and bullets says, Hey Phil. Um, okay, wait, <laughs> email, uh, inspireveterans at gmail.com. Okay. Disable venture and starting a boutique pedal company. Oh, Really? Let me hold on. I'm going to copy this because it will save in the super chats. And there you go. And of course, I'll read it out later, but I'm really curious about that. So it's a disabled veteran starting a boutique pedal company. Uh, would want, would you want a custom fuzz right? You know what? Uh, yeah, I'll check it out. That'd be something I, I wouldn't mind buying a pedal from somebody like, you know, that's, that's, that's basically, you know, a soldier who's, who's trying to, to, to do something cool. Obviously I can relate. Um, you know, I know what it's like to, to be a soldier and I know what it's like to start a business. Um, so I'd like to, to help out if I can. Uh, Beatmaster says, Phil, what sub $600, 100 watt head would you suggest if I'm looking for it to be versatile? Oh man, $600, sub $600. There's not a whole lot out there. Um, and you're not really giving me any feed, uh, any kind of suggestions of the type of amp, you know, you want high gain. To me, this th there's only a few sub $600 heads i i would actually put value into uh used marshall dsl um you know jcm 2000s uh you can still find them for 600 dollars down i think the e uh the 5150 uh pv amps and a lot of the two american made pv amps that you can find used for sub 600 dollars are pretty decent uh, i like the jet city stuff that's sub 600 dollars. that seems pretty decent as well i think they have a 100 watt head for 600 dollars. i think right about that if not they definitely have that used uh, the Black Star 100 watt head is, I think, used. You can get it sub 600. I don't know if it's new sub 600. Uh, it's pretty good, right? It's a pretty good amp as well. I still like, and so you know, as I'm going, I'm kind of going down in what I would prefer. So obviously the Marshall, then the PV, then the, you know, <laughs> you know, the Jet City. Those are all pretty good too. There's definitely, it's, you know what? Here's the good news, Beatmaster. There is no shortage of 100 watt tube amps on the market used dirt cheap out there. There's just lots of them. There's not a big market. You can buy 412 cabinets and 100 watt heads cheaper than you can probably buy 112 and 212 cabinets and 25 to and 50 watt heads. That's for sure. Um, so that's the good news. Uh, Andrew Romanico says, uh, super chat, line six pod HD 500X or similar uh, for beginner rec recommendations to master the device, learn the sound theory, and in general, how to learn tone engineering how to mimic sound for favorite artists. I get what you're saying. Basically what he's uh, s asking is, you know, getting a, a Line 6 Pod HD 500 to basically figure out all the sounds that are out there instead of doing something crazy like buying boxes and amps and saying, hey, you know, each sound, I'll figure it out. You can do it, something like that. Yeah, I've had an HD 500 and uh, I, I thought, I like the dual engines in it. It has dual processors in it. I found for me the HD 400 to be a little simpler to use and the HD 300 to be really simple, but a little lacking on the features. So 
I think if you're willing to read the manual and sit down with it, I think the HD 500 is, is a good way to go. I'm definitely not uh, a, a tech savvy when it comes to processors. So I couldn't say like, yeah, it's, it's really hard to figure out, but it was a little too much for me, the HD 500. So just as a suggestion, I would look at both those features, the HD 400 and the 500. I think the, the, the 400 you can get used pretty good as an option. And um, I really like the Line 6 HD 500. And then if you want something a little, my personal opinion, a little easier to use, look at some of the boss processors, uh, the, the, the full on processors there. I think they're a little bit straightforward because they're a little bit more knob interfaced, but basic stuff. Yeah, I think you're a good way to go. I think that's a smart way. That's one thing about um, these modeling amplifiers that are great. You can get them. You know, it used to be you get, you know, you get a, an entry level amplifier that sounds kind of like what that manufacturer's like. So you'd buy the inexpensive Marshall or Vox or, or uh, you know, Randall or Crate back in the day, uh, you know, Fender. And they kind of sounded like what that company sounded like. But modeling amps allow you to mix and match and try different sounds, different cabinets, different amps, uh, sounds and get you get a taste for what you're what you like. So I think I learned the most about amp sounds, you know, in other words, what I preferred from modeling amps, messing with them. And, and the reason I learned that is because I used to think I was missing out on so much, uh, you know, like, what about this amp? What about that amp? And when you get a modeling amp, you know, as you go through the settings and you hit certain amp settings and you're like, man, I don't like this at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? And although they're not exact, they still get you in the ballpark for at least sound. Uh, Shannon McCoy said, hey, no question. Just wanted to say thank you for being uh, who you are. Well, I want to thank you for being who you are and the world needs good people now more than ever. Have a nice day. I, I, I appreciate that, man. I, I'm, I thank you so much. Uh, I, I appreciate it. And, uh, so let's, let's talk about, I'm going to jump since that's going to segue, uh, into this. I want to talk about, uh, and hold on a second. You guys are popping in questions. I want to talk about Chapman guitars being a guitar center. <laughs> that's what I want to talk about. Um, we've been talking on the live show about me getting a Chapman guitar for a couple months. And that's what ties into super chats. You guys have been super chatting and, and, uh, and, and you're donating to that fund. Um, and, uh, so basically the big announcement this week is Rob Chapman announced that they are in guitar center now. And so I, uh, yesterday during the, the live hangout, I do the once a month live hangout with Patreon. Yesterday was seven and a half hours long. Uh, and in those discussions, we, I kind of learn a little bit talking to everybody and we were talking about, you know, whether or not it's a good or bad thing that it's in the guitar center. So one of the reasons that the subject came up was, you know, Guitar Center is not known really for uh, the service that, let's say, Sweetwater is. In other words, making sure the guitar is set up right, make sure it's getting out of the you know, box with a good experience. So the question was, do we think the Chapman guitars uh, will be very good coming from Guitar Center? Now, my point in this uh, is simple. Chapman going to Guitar Center is huge for a lot of reasons. It's huge for Chapman, obviously, you know, right? Uh, he's, I mean, that's the that's the pinnacle because there's 300 stores, there are huge presence. Getting in there is a big deal. But really, what it signifies is a lot. It's not because he's a YouTuber and I'm a YouTuber and I'm like gonna rally the cry of YouTubers. What I'm gonna say is this: uh, Do you find it interesting that a company, a large company, which we know is Gibson, uh, is not doing well a company that refused to listen to its customer base for so long and and not listen to the ideas that were seemed like they were coming back and i don't know that for a fact it's just isn't my impression and now a company that is uh kind of built on feedback from the customer base you know one of the things i always uh love to what read is that people go well chapman doesn't build guitars he doesn't design guitars it's it's so he's not a guitar builder well I think he acknowledges that. I've never seen him say anything to or even try to disparage that he's not that. I think what he's always done is said, you know, here's what we can do. We can go overseas and we can have these guitars made. What do you guys think we should do? And a lot of people said, I read a lot. And again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm only playing devil advocate on both sides. Okay. So I could argue both sides easily. But one of the things I love is when people say, some people say, they look like Fenders, they look like Gibsons, they look like this. Well, I'm like, well, that's what happens when you ask a group of musicians what they want. They say, well, I want a, I want a Telly, but I want Humbuckers, and I want a Les Paul, but I want an easy access point. So, of course, their guitar is built by feedback uh, of those. I watched every video where he asked what colors they should do, what so you know, what kind of cutouts do they do. So, um, I'm curious what you guys think. What's the vibe? I think overall the vibe is good. Uh, that. Basically, in Guitar Center is good. The the really scary thing, I'll tell you is this. It's a home run that he's in Guitar Center. There's no doubt about that. 
The scary part is, will Guitar Center be able to sell the line through and reorder? The reorder is the scary part because Guitar Center can make a brand like Chapman, but it could also do some damage if it can't sell the guitars and then has to dump tons of used guitars because i'm just guessing i have no inside information but i'm guessing that the guitar uh center um uh the guitar center uh purchase of of chapman guitars is probably equal to everything they've sold up to date does that make sense that kind of makes sense to me like in other words if they sold a thousand guitars guitar center put in a thousand guitar order so this is going to almost if not double their business so I'm curious to see what you think. And here's the deal. If you guys are willing to go on guitarcenter.com right now, let me show you what I'm up to. Hold on a second. Give me one second. I got to, I got to find it. So if you go to guitarcenter.com, because that's who's selling the guitars now, I'm going to show you right now. I am willing to buy a uh, Indonesian Chapman guitar. Okay. So I will buy uh, any one of these models. And uh, I'm really, I'll be honest with you, I'm not interested in the baritone. So I really appreciate if you guys don't suggest the baritone. Um, and I'm not a huge Ghost Fret fan, but I know that's a huge guitar. And I know you guys would be interested in that. So I'd like to hear what you guys think, which guitar. I really would rather prefer to buy one of the $400 guitars again, but that's okay. Anyways, here's the idea. Let's pick a guitar today, okay? No more speculating. We don't have to guess. Uh, let's pick a guitar today and I'll order it just like we've done before, like with the St. Vincent guitar. And when it comes in, I will review it. And what I'll review is uh, almost like a punch card in the idea that I want to review how long it took to get here. What did the box presentation look like? Well, I'll do the unboxing. I'll, I'll do the, uh, you know, go through it, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, what is there finish flaws? Is it heavy? Is it light? We'll just go through the guitar and see and give you, and, and really not even, critique the guitar which i will but critique the experience to see and and i bet you we could actually do something on this channel that's unique to out there which i bet you the chapman guys like rob chapman might watch these videos because i want to give an oz an honest presentation it's it's our money right it's my money you guys have done the super chats you guys have, you donated into that too added to the chapman fund uh the patrons have done the chapman fund i appreciate that we'll put we'll buy this guitar and We'll, we'll, and I bet you they'd appreciate the feedback, good or bad. It will be what it will be, <laughs> right? Uh, and and uh, and maybe that'll help uh, Chapman because one of the things I think would be scary right now is if Guitar Center doesn't uh, do a good job uh, filtering the guitars, quality assurance returns, you know, do all that stuff. That's the stuff that could hurt uh, Chapman guitar. So I'm interested in doing it. I thought it'd be fun. I ran it by the uh, the patrons yesterday on the Hangout. They thought it was a good idea. So, uh, so uh, there you go. So, all right. So, uh, what we'll do is like last time, uh, I appreciate you guys all the comments now, but I'll ask when we get ready there and, uh, um, and, uh, and, uh, and we'll pick the guitar, but I want you guys to think about which guitar you're going to suggest. Cause we'll do it just like, uh, uh, like last time, once I say, let's go, I want you guys to all start popping in which guitar you want and we'll go with it. I'm going to pick the color though. <laughs> <laughs> so um i'm not really into black guitars so that's probably why i'm so it makes it easy with you guys i'd rather pick the blue one or the you know the red one or whatever i just rather do that than the black guitar there's nothing wrong with the black guitar but uh, you know i got enough black guitars um and uh Okay, uh, Zumzul says, thoughts on your Richlight fretboard, question mark. Does it really uh, deserve all the grief it gets? Well, you know, I was talking about this yesterday in the Patreon. As you guys see behind me, I have, uh, no, I don't have it behind me. It's in the other room. I got to go Nay 6 and without paying attention, I didn't notice it had a Richlight fretboard. The only thing I could say negative about that guitar is I got the guitar because if you guys remember the, how it worked is I bought one on Sweetwater. It, I bought a B stock, one of the returns. I got it. It was too defective for me. I sent it back. Some months later now, gone by, and I decided to order another one new from Sweetwater, and I never looked and I didn't notice that they had went from Rosewood to Richlight on the fretboard. When I got the guitar, it played great. In fact, it plays fantastic. But I was like, when I was playing it, when I first got it, I was like, man, it, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't, it's actually thought, and I'm not exaggerating, it sounded plasticky to me. Like there was something weird about it. And it felt weird when I was bending notes. And when I was weird, it meant like no friction because the fretboard was so smooth, like glass. So it was just unfamiliar to me. So I can't tell you guys whether I hated it or liked it because it was really just unfamiliarness, right? It just didn't feel like something I knew. Now, what's interesting about that was I, I definitely identified that. And then when I set it down on the stand, I, I saw how, that it looked, you know, the fretboard was 
black. And I said, well, I don't remember it having an ebony fretboard. I thought it was rosewood. And then I looked at it and it was shiny. And I go, well, there's no, that's not ebony. And then I went and looked up Sweetwater Specs. It's Rich Light. I don't think Rich Light's bad. Uh, Rich Light is basically a phenolic resin. There's all kinds of phenolic resin fretboards. Uh, Zon bases have done it. Uh, there's a ton of companies done it. Uh, obviously, Modulus, Status, a lot of base companies, high base companies, have used all kinds of different kinds of phenolic resins and called them everything you know under the book. They've been called like Abonial. Uh, Ibanez uses it in inexpensive guitars. Um, and uh, so, I have to say, right now, I, the the jury is not in on Rich Light and how I feel about it, but this guitar, I'm definitely going to stick with it and see what I think about it um, and, and and see. Um, I think it's too easy for me to go. It's just not, it's just not like what I'm used to, <laughs> right? But I want to be more open-minded than that. So here's the deal. I'm trying. Uh, you know, it's like with my kids when they don't like something, when they, you know, they, I say, take a second bite, you know, at least give it, give it two tries, right? So, so I'm going to give it two tries. In other words, I'm going to keep going with it. Uh, David uh, did a super chat. It says, use new amp in UK that can do funk and soul uh, at band volume. Uh, British hard rock band slash at low volume line outs uh, for recording on bonus. Uh, oh, recording a bonus Marshall origin. Uh, so use the new amp. Well, you're describing the Marshall origin. It does all that stuff. Uh, but I haven't heard one yet. I plan, uh, I plan. So hey, let me tell you, I got the Marshall one watt. I think I showed you guys. It's right here. And the, I'm going to do a review and uh, I kind of feel dumb telling you guys now if I'm going to do a review, but officially I'm not, I'm not happy with it. Uh, I don't hate it, but I don't like it. Um, and, uh, and the reason I don't like it is when they originally did the JCM 2000, uh, one watt, there's a feature that it had that was fantastic, and they took out on this. So they added reverb. Let me hold it right here. They added reverb, and I think that's a cool feature. What they took out was over here, there was a knob that was a gain control on the clean channel and a deep switch over here. Now, the deep switch, I can't say that is a big, is a big deal, but the clean channel on this amp, this one watt, is so thin and glass-like. And I appreciate you guys. Somebody noticed I got one. I guess they got one too and sent me an email and said, hey, Phil, without me even saying that to them, they said, hey, they gave me some suggestions that they were noticing it was bright too and how to warm it up. So to me, one of the things that was cool about the JCM 2001 watt was it was, even though it was one watt, it was a really cool pedal platform amp late at night. And this amp is really not a good platform for pedals. It's just too bright. Now the distortion channel is pretty good. I actually like it. Uh, I, I can't say it's better or worse than the original one. Cause here's the other problem too. This was $300 and the, uh, the GACM 2001 watt was almost $800, 700 bucks. So even with its, uh, fallbacks, having the reverb added in and being, uh, considerably less than half the price, I think it has merit as a guitar amp. And I really curious now what I think of it against the black star one watt, you know what I mean? Cause I think that even then it might win against the black star one watt cause it's got some cool features. Uh, and, but I don't know. So that being said, I'm going to AB it against the uh, one watt black star. Uh, I'll do the review, but why that ties in is, uh, is to your question was for me, I'm that definitely has sing, uh, cinched it for me. I'm really interested in, in the Marshall origin amp series over the DSL series. So I was thinking about getting the DSL 20. I went this route. I was like, okay, maybe I'll send it back to Sweetwater and get the DSL 20. And now I'm like, no, I already know what to do. Just get the origin. I already think I like it. To answer your question, another great amp would be a, uh, a, uh, any of the fender amps, man, you can do well with that. Uh, high rod deluxe, or a blues junior, right? You can't go wrong with those amps uh, for for mid to small size gigs, funk. Uh, it you know the overdrive pedal in front of it, you can get those slash kind of tones. So uh, definitely cool. All right, uh, next one. Next question. Oh, Chris has got a question. He says, any thoughts on Mitchell guitars? All the Mitchell guitars I've uh, picked up at Guitar Center, they seem fine. Now, some people were talking about how some of them are beat up, but I mean, the physical guitars seem fine. Um, I think I heard a rumor. I think it's true that Guitar Center will probably ditch the Mitchell line, obviously now having Chapman, but that it can be redundant. They could be doing both. Who knows? Um, the Mitchell line obviously is named after, I think, Larry Mitchell, the uh, founder, the the original owner of Guitar Center. That was the logic. Uh, it's no different. It's really Guitar Center is hardly bitten. <laughs> right uh so it's their in-house brand 
And I think they did pretty good. I think Harley Bitten is a better brand in the idea that I think the guitars are pro less money and probably ultimately just as good, if not nicer. But I can't really say nicer. Definitely different, different, definitely just as good. Boy, say that twice as fast. So there's the thoughts on that. Uh, all right, let's do. Yeah. Uh, Paul says, Guitar Center's Kirkland Signature, LOL. Yes. Yeah, every store uh, has, has an in-house brand, right? You know, big chain store. Sam Ash has one. Guitar Center has one. Uh, obviously, the Andersons guys have one. Uh, uh, you know, um, Tallman has one. So it's just how it goes. So, uh, and that's why I think it's impressive that Chapman's grown outside of that. That'd be, think about this, Paul. Uh, Chapman Guitars being Guitar Center would be like Costco Kirkland being in Walmart, right? That's an impressive feat to watch happen. That, that you, you got to imagine how uh, Guitar Center's got to feel about the fact that every dollar that they sell those uh, Chapman guitars, they're helping Anderton's music, right? So there you go. Um, Okay, Shut Up Lux Talk said, best low price Yamaha acoustic. Oh, man. You know, I don't know. Let's look. Let's take five seconds and look. So what we'll do is we'll go. I first have to find who has Yamaha acoustics. Give me a second here. Um, because Yamaha, they're one of those, yeah, they're one of those brands like, uh, I'm going to show you what I come up with, like Ivan is, where... They don't like names, like model numbers. So let's sort by price. So you said, oh, I want to go back to it. Uh, best low price. I'm going to say low price. See, low price is kind of vague uh, um, where, it, you know, everybody's going to have a different opinion of that. To me, a moderately priced, low price acoustic is going to be $300 to $200, right? I mean, that's a good low price guitar. Some people may think it's 500 bucks. Some may be 150 bucks. So, uh, Let's go to, uh, I'm looking at, I'll show you guys what I'm going to see. I'm show, looking at in a second. And in fact, I'll do it right now. Here you go. Here we go, guys. We're looking at some Yamaha acoustics. All right. Uh, me personally, so this $190 guitar, what I want to see is what features do they start giving you? Solid spruce top, brace for a better punch and projection. So already I'm digging this guitar. 200 bucks. Uh, tuning keys look decent, right? They're not the junky, uh, Cluson copies. They're giving you a solid spruce top. There's nothing to hate there. Yamaha constructs really inter interesting and really good guitars. So, uh, 200 bucks. I think that's good. Uh, I'd stay away from this pack. <laughs> so, uh, $300. My experience with this stuff, these kind of guitars, these odd shaped ones, these are very untraditional sounding acoustics. It's going to have like a mid range and a, and a high, high frequency tone to it. I, I like that it's binding, but I don't know if you'd fall in love with it. Uh, let's see what a hundred dollars more gets you. It says out of stock arriving soon, but I want to see what is a hundred dollars. It looks like you're getting the same tuners. Uh, you're getting binding. So that's, that's cool. I don't know if it's worth a hundred bucks, but Hey, it's got a classic tone wood compliment. <laughs> I love that. Um, okay. Uh, I just want the specifications, right? We just want to see, do we have it right here? Oh, I hate it. Solid spruce top back and sides. Oh, okay. So that's a rosewood back and sides thing. So I, I wouldn't pay the hundred bucks just to get rosewood back and sides. So to be honest with you, I bet you this 299 with electronics is probably the way to go. Let's see, because sometimes it gets dangerous because even though, you know, it just goes up a hundred bucks, you get electronics and Solid Sitka Spruce Top. So, I mean, no one cares. Uh, Sitka, Sitka Spruce, I should say. Anyways, those are the two I would look at. So that will tell you a lot because if those are good, then as you go up in price, it will just get slightly better than that. So that's a, that's a good bet. Uh, you know, Yamaha makes fantastically great acoustics. There's a few companies, and that's one of them, that makes sub $500 fantastic guitars. Uh, James Shock... Shacklefold. Sorry, James. James Shacklefold says, with all the disgruntled luthiers in the market, do you see them uh, taking, talking with Chapman to make an American version? I can see that happening. Uh, well, definitely. If there's a, you know, they have the British version now, right? And if they're in Guitar Center uh, and they have a, a bigger market in the U.S., I think uh, having a, 
a, a line of American Chapman's could be a big thing. This could be a big deal, guys. This could be Chapman. Chapman doesn't have to be Fender and Gibson, man. If they can just take over Schecter's market, that's going to be impressive. So these guys have a shot and it will be uh, enough of a, it'll be enough of a rally cry in the market. I think it could have good possible, uh, uh, outcome and the idea that I think a lot of companies will look at this and take, take that stuff seriously. To me, I pointed out the NAM show that two of the best, I, I mentioned this in the NAM show to, to a lot of people, two of the brands that I thought were really had the most excitement at the NAM show were really popping was obviously the Chapman guys and Kiesel. And I was uh, making an off the cuff joke at dinner one night about, don't you think it's interesting that the two brands that have embraced their social marketing the most are seem to be doing the best in what I'm talking about growth, right? Both companies seem to be hand over hand growing. So, so, uh, uh, Mel wants to know, Hey, why is the Fender vaporizer amp only available in Europe? Well, it's discontinued in the USA for sure. So if it's only available in Europe, maybe because the con they're having, a because that amp's made overseas. So maybe they just still make it and send it to Europe or the Europe still has some left over, but I know it's discontinued in the U S and that's why it's not here. All of those amps are discontinued. They don't do any of that stuff anymore. Um, that's when they were going to expand the line out past Fender. You know what I mean? With all these non-Fender named products. But that those days are gone. Kevin wants to know, hey, Phil, thank you for the super chat, by the way, Kevin. He says, hey, Phil, I live in Phoenix and I have a PV uh, Invective. And uh, would you be so kind as to demo it and tell me what you th think of honest opinion? Uh, and let me get your, okay, so I have your information. So I will reach out to you, Kevin. I will email you. Um, and see, I'm, I'm really curious now I gotta, you know what I mean? Now I gotta look at that guitar. Hold on a second. Sorry guys. I promise I'll just look up time. I'll just give it to us in bonus time. We'll go lang longer or hanging with me. Hold on. Let's go. Um, go to images. Oh, so is this that, that's the, that's that amp that, uh, like Misha Mishur's amp or something, right? This is that crazy expensive one. Yeah, this is the Misha Mansur expensive amp. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'll, I'll email you. Uh, maybe because that'd be cool. I'm sure you guys would be interested in that. Um, nothing cooler than seeing stuff like that. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, <laughs> there's no other way to get that amp and review it. So yeah, I appreciate that, Kevin. That'd be that'd be something I'm up for. Um, okay. Uh, Uh, let's see. Dale Weber. Hold on. Wait, hold on. I'm, it's jumping. Okay. Man, you guys, there's, there's a lot of us. There's 756 of us. So the questions are kind of popping. All right. And Tony just did a super chat. I appreciate that, Tony, man. That was really cool. Okay. Pete's got a question. Uh, it says, he says, dope, screwed up the last super chat. Okay, hey, Phil, thinking of getting an ESP E2 Eclipse uh, DB. Any thoughts? Mostly hard rock, early metal guy. Yes, that's a great guitar, man. The ESP E2 Eclipse, it's fantastic. I set one up for a student about a year ago. His was, I think, in a purple or a blue. It was fantastic guitar. Um, in fact, the E2 stuff confused me. I think a lot of people, if you know, are like, what? Okay, so it's not ESP, it's not LTD, it's something else now. And it's in between those prices. Like ESP is now three grand and LTD is like sub thousand dollars. And this is like in the $1,500 range, you know, ish, the, whatever the mid pricing. And I was confused. But man, when I, um, when I, uh, uh, when I was setting it up, it, it's like I said, in Arizona, man, everybody gets fret sprout. The, the fret boards just dry up here. And, um, and uh, that guitar was fantastic. So there you go. So if you want a recommendation, that's all I can tell you. Good stuff. They're another company too. I think LTD, especially E2 and ESP, which is the Japanese made and the American made stuff. They're one of those companies that you can feel pretty confident telling a friend, yeah, man, that's a pretty good guitar. <laughs> it's not too dicey. You should be, you should be okay. Okay. So Cole, uh, Cole Bowman says, Hey Phil, I have a 65 Princeton reverb reissue and I know you have the 68 uh, no, any way of getting rid of the fizziness you get from pushing it with pedals would like my pedals to sound like themselves. Yeah. The fizziness, I have the fizziness too. The 68 is a little warmer and bigger sounding like bassier than the 65. And I find the fizziness is coming from the 10 inch speaker. 
So if that's bugs you, the first thing I would do is if you have another cabinet, run into a 112 or 212 cabinet. You can run out the, you can use it just like a head. Just unplug the speaker that's internally, run to the head, keep it around eight ohms, uh, and you'll be fine. That's the you know safe load. The amp can go to four, but just stick it at eight. And if it's still if it still has a fizziness now, that's something else. But I I bet you it's the speaker. And so you can upgrade that speaker. That's a big deal. I never upgraded the speaker I have now. I like the speaker that came with the 68. And when I do find I don't like the speaker i actually run it out into a 112 cabinet so there's something to think about but i really think it's the 10 inch speaker my basement 59 which is a 410 has the same issue too 10 inch speakers just break up really fast so the the pedals just find that frequency in those speakers that just like i know what you're talking about just a little of that fizziness right a little too much so curtis said um Epi slash Econoburst signature update. All right. This is last week. If you guys remember, Curtis was talking about this. He got the, the Anaconda Burst signature update and it had issues. He says, hey, Phil, I took I took your advice. Great. Uh, brought it to the guitar back to the retailer and he's going to evaluate and offer some money back. Cool. Thank you. How do I sign up for the Patreon month of Hangout? Um, you just go to Patreon. It's all on there. I'll put a link on this uh, in the um, when I do the index tonight. And uh, so so there's for that. And um that, that's great. I'm glad. And you know what it is? I'm glad that the uh, the store was willing to work with you. Like I said, I, I would imagine, you know, that most stores, reputable business should take care of the customer that way. It seems like an easy thing to do. I mean, it kind of stinks. I mean, I'm sure you would prefer to have the perfect guitar at the perfect price. But you know what? The truth is, what I learned is all guitars eventually become used when you play them. So if you can get a deal up front, sometimes it doesn't hurt. Okay. Uh Okay, so now we're going to jump subjects. I know you guys have questions, but hold on. Uh, but uh, I want to talk about something that was in the news, and it's not Gibson, <laughs> right? It's negative, kind of, but it's not Gibson. And it's this. So let me go to it because I thought it was uh, crazy interesting. So uh, here we go. Let me go to it. I'm going to share with you. So Heritage Guitars was in the news. I don't know if you caught this. So it says 14 Heritage Guitar Workers uh, 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 are off the job as the company heads in a new direction. So I'm going to kind of give you the synopsis of this article. Maybe we can talk about this. So what happened was uh, Heritage Guitars management decided to let go of 10 workers. Now they have approximately like 16 workers. So you understand what that means when they let go 10 people. That's you know, that's basically the whole force. But during the interaction of the 10 people being uh, let go, four got just left with them, you know, right? So in this article, I, I highly recommend it. I'll put a link to it in the uh, in the description uh, when we do the index. But if you scroll through it, you'll see. What I like about this article is there's a response from the uh, workers uh, and there's a response from the management. So you can go through this. I know how they do articles now is horrible because it's like, they put an ad in the middle and then they jump around. Um, but basically the workers are saying, hey, you know, um, we do quality work. The management's blaming us for not doing quality work. And now the management wants to put in these machines. The management's saying, hey, the workers aren't listening and they're not willing to change with the new changes. Uh, the workers also said that uh, heritage quality and their unwillingness to listen and understand the high quality standards resulted in destruction of over 300 guitars. So that's a bold statement. So they're basically saying that because the, the management uh, didn't listen, didn't heed the warning of the employees, uh, they had to destroy 300 guitars. So it's a really interesting thing. And the reason why is not because it's a negative thing. I mean, it is sadly not a positive thing, but it's really kind of goes in this like, wow. So it's not only Gibson, but now there's heritage problems too. Um, and you know, heritage being a much smaller company, this seems to be a big deal. I don't. I hate to see the workers laid off or, or let go. Uh, the workers also uh, chimed in the fact that they're not paid very much. Some of them only make minimum wage. So, uh, so you know, and they do it for the passion. So my heart goes out to the guys that 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 have going through this. Although you know, it, it's sad when new owners come in. And this is the reason why I point this out is this is exactly like the Gibson problem right now. There we don't know what's going to happen when new owner, new new owners take control because new owners took control of heritage and look at all the problems they have now. Obviously, if you have 16 workers building guitars and 14 of them leave, I would imagine right now, if you have a heritage guitar in order, you're not getting it anytime soon. So, um, so there you go. I, I, you know, so on that note, any thoughts or anything like that? I'd like to see. So, 
Yeah, uh, Aaron says, apparently they are even better copy of Gibson than any of you ever could have imagined. Yeah, yeah, you think, right, they're copying the guitars, but I don't think they should copy the business model strategy. So it, it's it's just an interesting time. It seems like an interesting time in guitar building, right? This, I mean, you know, you have somebody like Chapman all of a sudden, you know, kind of rise to the top with the Guitar Center deal. And then you have other companies kind of sinking. And so, and this is something we've been talking about, not just this channel, but all channels about, you know, this adjustment, you know, everything kind of, um, uh, hold on a second. I got a question coming in too from, from Nathan. Uh, if you guys know Nathan, Nathan's my buddy and he works at PRS. Uh, he's uh, in the finishing department and he had a question and he, he, he sent it to me uh, and he, he thought it was a good idea. So here's the question. I like it. He says, uh, why do you think Fender and Charvel Jackson is the only company that has embraced building in Mexico? And that, Nathan, so you know, the reason why I want to answer your question, it chimes in on another thing that happens with Gibson that no one's really talked about. I don't know if you guys know this, but in 2007, Gibson bought a company called Garrison, which is an acoustic guitar company in Canada. And... When that happened, they uh, decided to not continue the Garrison line. They cut it, you know, they stopped it. And I guess they were going to start building acoustics. And I haven't heard much of it. And what's interesting about this is it's one of those things now that you're looking at the Gibson debacle. You're wondering, you know, whatever happened with that? And so I did some Google searching and I couldn't really see um, what was going on. I don't know if any of you have any of the Gibson acoustics that are made in Canada, uh, if they're currently still making them. I'm not really familiar. I, I, I couldn't really go through the line in Gibson and figure out which ones were the, the Canadian ones. But it's one of those things like, yeah, one makes you wonder if Gibson would have embraced a Canadian line of electric guitars, if that would have helped too. You know what I mean? Make a, basically some of those really great three, $4,000 guitars and put them in that $1,500 to $2,000 range you know, cut that price in half, kind of like a Fender did, right? You can't, you can't do a $1,200 made in America. You get a $600 made in Mexico. I don't, I don't think that's a, a bad idea. So some interesting things now that we seeing the, the mess of Gibson. Okay. So, all right. Uh, Yeah, so Dale says, hey, I love Heritage Guitars. Not only the, the quality, uh, they, they're from my home state, all right? And uh, they, they are like a high-end Epiphone. I really uh, do hope Heritage Guitars does become Gibson's new owner. They, uh, they'll be built right. Yeah, it's wishful thinking, but let me tell you, man. Uh, Heritage Guitars, um, unless I, they, they have something I don't know about, uh, it's, I mean, literally... There, you're talking about a couple million dollars a uh, company, you know, versus Gibson's billion dollar company. It's just, it's not likely, I would imagine. So, and I don't think this is going to help the, <laughs> that they're lost all their employees. Like I said, this is a really bad thing. So think about this. Uh, in the news also was Guitar, uh, no, Guitar Center, was uh, Heritage, or, man, sorry. In the news was Gibson also did some layoffs uh, of staff in the custom shop in Nashville. And, in fact, when I read the heritage thing, I was a little confused because I thought that was somebody confusing the Gibson thing, right? I thought the article was like, oh, they think it's they think it's it's Gibson, but it's heritage, or they think it's heritage, but it's Gibson. And it was actually simultaneously two things happening at the same time. So uh, Klaus Klaus Jules, sure why not? <laughs> Klaus Jules. Uh, says, can you review the string Butler uh, for Les Pauls? Um, I can't say I'm gonna do it, but I'll look into it. I'll put it in the top index, and it, you know, I'm not sure. Although, um, one of the patrons yesterday was showing me his, and he seems to really like it. So maybe I'll I'll defer to his to his experience with it and see if that will make it make sense. Um. Beat Johnson says, Phil, hey, Phil, why the heck is your YouTube channel a film animation category channel? Yeah, you know, I noticed that a while back, too. It changed it. There is no actual category for what we do when we do gear and stuff. And um, I was under something else. And I I'm pretty sure YouTube did that. So I could probably switch it back. I'm not sure. Sometimes YouTube messes with stuff and all of a sudden my, my, my stuff's all moved around. So who knows? Okay. 
Oh, uh, William Gonzalez says, "Hey Phil, did you uh, did you get to keep uh, did you get to keep any of the new Fender pedals you just reviewed? I did. So the Fender guys were so fantastic. Uh, what they did. So uh, Martin at Fender, uh, Martin is the guy, not Martin Guitars. Martin at Fender reached out and uh, uh, and uh, about two weeks ago, and and said this great thing. And I don't know if I'm supposed to tell you guys, but I'm gonna tell you anyways, just because I thought it was cool." He sent me an email and it was a really cool email to get Fender. Fender's never really, I've never really interacted with Fender as a YouTuber. And uh, he said, hey, we're looking for, we're going to release a new line of pedals and we're looking for some organic, honest reviews. Um, and basically all we were asking, he, he had two criteria. Again, I hope this doesn't ruin my relationship with him I'm telling you guys this, but I, I see he seemed pretty cool. So I think we're okay. He basically said two things. Uh, we'll send you the, uh, the pedals, which they didn't send me the pedals. They sent me the pedals on this pedal board you see behind me. Like it was really decked out. It was really beautiful. Like it was a, an impressive presentation they sent to me. Um, and he said, I could do and say whatever I want. Uh, just whatever. It's fine. Uh, just the only requirement they had was I couldn't release the video until their official releases uh, were launched. And um, which was a pretty uh, relatively, I think, uh, understandable request, right? Um, especially since they had no idea what I was going to say. And I know some of you guys are probably skeptical of that stuff, but here's the deal when I say that. Um, sometimes companies, when they interact, especially a company of that size, they want to see your video before it's launched. And uh, he was okay uh, with it. Now, I want to tell you for full disclosure, I sent it to him before I launched it, but I just did it to show it to him. You know what I mean? I sent it to him. I sent it to him probably an hour before I launched it. And... Uh, and said, Hey, I launched the, you know, this is the video I'm going to do. Um, and mostly I just look, was hoping to see if there was any kind of major errors, he would kind of find them. But, uh, so it was really cool. So it was a pretty candid review. Um, ironically it worked out great for me because, uh, I like the pedals a lot. I'm really impressed. I really, really like them. Um, in fact, I will tell you this, um, everything I said in the video, uh, the review, um, I stand by hundred percent. In fact, I like them more than I was actually leading on then. I was saying, oh, they're really good. They're really. I didn't want to seem like I was hamming up too much, but I was really impressed. The Pugilist is my favorite hundred dollar distortion pedal, not overdrive distortion pedal, um, hands down. There's just no. There's not even a, a, a second. So when you think about what's out there for hundred bucks, you got MXR Full Bore, you got the uh, Boss Metal Core, the Metal Zones. I mean, when you think about pedals like this, the Pugilist is is pretty hard to beat. Um, the uh, Santa Ana is a really impressive pedal because it's just a really nice pedal. It's not the best pedal I've ever heard. It's definitely on par with all the pedals that I have that are in that price point. It sounds as good as those, maybe a little better than some, maybe not as good as others, but definitely on par. And it sounds fantastic. Um, it's great. The, the compressor is my favorite compressor. So of all my pedals, that's my favorite compressor. In fact, a lot of you guys uh, probably know this, but the same week I got that, I bought the exotic uh, SP compressor. And I will tell you honestly, I like the, uh, the the Fender one better for sure. There's not even like a little bit better. I just like it better. Period. Um, it's it's a really impressive compressor. The buffer is really cool. I'm really enjoying it. The reason I say it like that is I've never really used a buffer, and I have a couple of them, so I'm still kind of figuring out if I need the buffer. <laughs> You know what I mean? But uh, so far, so good. And the re re reverb and delay are as good as anything in that price point. Same thing. They're really good stuff. So uh, it's an impressive line. Like I said, they really thought this out. It was really cool. So there you go. Um, and... Oh, and then the Benjamin's like saying Fender, the Keeley compressor. So see, that's a good example. I like the Fender compressor better. Now there's a reason why it's not just the sound, the compressor. I like compressors that are quiet, quiet. Keeley's compressors are really good. They're some of my favorites. I have them and I, I love them, but uh, I have compressors that are slightly more quiet because I run compression while overdrive is on. And if you guys, some of you guys know, that's a, that's a, that's a hard cocktail to miss uh, mix because you know, the compressor wants to add a lot of noise and then the overdrive just enhances that. So uh, there's a couple of compressors I've used over the years that are just a little quieter. The And this is one of them. Um, in fact, I, it was really creepy how low noise the threshold is on that one. Plus, I really like that uh, jewel that turns white to red as you're playing because it really lets me see visually when I'm hitting, you know, the release and when it comes back. It's a really cool feature. Uh, in fact, I like it because on my uh, Bogner Alco, no, my Bogner, what is that? The Burnley pedal. I have the Bogner Burnley Overdrive pedal. It has that same kind of LED function. I always thought that was really cool. So, 
Mark's got a question. He says, thoughts on the 2007 Fender Standard Strat for 350 bucks? Uh, I think that's a good deal, man. Uh, especially if it's Rosewood, because you can't get Rosewood anymore. It's uh, going to be Paraferro. But even at Maple, good deal. 350 is the right price to pay, right? You, uh, when you get a Fender, a Fender Standard uh, Strat, uh, 250 is the, I can't believe I got it for that price. 300 is like a, wow, they really must have liked me or so there might be something wrong with this guitar. 350 is definitely the fair market price. I see where they're really pushing for and 450 now. So 350 is good. I think you did great or you're going to do great if you get it. 2007. 2007 though is going to be right before the change. So it'll have smaller frets on it than the 2008 model. So, uh, and I'm only just saying that you might've never noticed that if I didn't say it, but I'm just telling you know that there was some changes to the, the standard series in 2008 and um, you might prefer the 2008 uh, seven better. So either way though, the great thing is uh, I think if you get into it for 350, uh, you can get out of it for 350 if you decide later you don't like it. So there, there you go. Uh, sweep freak says, Phil, silent single coils are traditional. I am in that same dilemma myself right now. This uh, strat behind me over here, uh, is my American professional strat, and I'm just not, uh, not feeling the single coils. They sound great for single coils, but I want a little bit more. I'm thinking about going to a noiseless single coil in it. So I will keep you posted on what I decide to do. Okay. Okay. Oh, somebody's telling me, Mark, 350 is a fair price. Sometimes you might be able to get it for 325 or 300. Yeah, like I said, but it's reasonable. I agree, Joseph. Fantastic. Uh, 100%. Like I said, 350 is not the steal it price, but it's definitely in the fair price realm and it's good price. So depending on condition too, you understand, right? Um, okay. What do we got? What do we, there's so many questions. I'm trying to find some. Oh, so Chris is just chiming in. He said, last night I put in the tone zone single coil pickup, the S pickup in my Strat guitar. It's not, uh, it's not too bad. Yeah. You know, what's funny is the ones I'm thinking about is the injector series, the Paul Gilbert injector ones. That's what I'm thinking about doing just because it's different than anything I have else I have. Cause I have some vintage, I have vintage style Strat pickups in my Strats. So. I was looking for something a little bit beefier and more modern sounding, but still keeps, um, keeps, uh, what do you call it? Keeps, uh, you know, the strat kind of sound going. So, um, all right. This question is, uh, Amir has been asked this. I think he asked a bunch of times. So I want to make sure I get it to it. It says best locking keys tuners for the Epiphone SG. Um, well, I like for, for the Epiphone SG, I would go with anything that you don't have to drill out or cut new holes, you know, drill out new holes or drill new holes, nothing you have to do to mod. So that's going to be tough because depending on which Epiphone SG you have, but I really would recommend the, uh, the ratio tuners by graph tech because they have the adapters or the hip shot tuners with the ump plates or finding the, uh, the equivalent tuner that's on there now, but there's a better version. So, you know, there's a, every tuner that's pretty much out there on a guitar. Now there is a higher end version that looks exactly like it, that you can get and retrofit it in there. So you have to do a little research on that. So that's what I would, I would do. Uh, uh yeah, and you know what? Uh, I think it's Tillin. Tillin Mars says, in my experience, noiseless pickups kind of sound like a Mexican Fender. You know what? That's a that's an interesting thing. I, that probably means your ears not uh, not wrong. Um, the Mexican uh, Fender Strats have uh, ceramic pickups, or ceramic magnets, and uh, I I agree with you. They're not noiseless, but yeah, they have that same kind of ceramic kind of sound uh, to them. So yeah. I think that I agree. And, I, but see, what's funny is like some, some people commented on videos before I've done, I like the way the Mexican strats pick up sound. You know what I mean? I, I like the vintage ones probably better, but I like the way they sound. Um, because there's certain things I like them. There's, there's certain things they're beefy. In fact, I own, uh, in my, uh, a couple of my guitars I actually have a Mexican single coil in the bridge of this. And then I have the, the, the vintage ones in the neck and middle. So, Okay, uh, next. Oh, uh, Yeoman says, Phil, I know you really like PRS uh, series. He does too, me too. Did you pre-order, 
did you pre order S2 Studio? Any feedback from Nam? To be honest, I'm really curious about the HS configuration. Uh, the S2 Studios look cool, man. I didn't pre order one because I am, I'm done. I have too many. I don't have too many, but I have too many pure S's, <laughs> right? Like I, I don't got any more room for any more. It's, it's. I, I got you know two cores. Uh, my Mira. I got an SE. I got an CE, and I got S2. And, uh, and that's, that's, it's just like, you know, I just can't validate anymore, justify anymore. So, um, but that would be one that would, I, I would look at. It's pretty cool. Uh, okay. The, all right. What do we got? Any other subjects that are cool? Let's see what else. Uh, Nathan's chiming in. Hold on a second. Like I said, Nathan works at PRS, so maybe we'll give him maybe we'll give him some credit. He says the S2 studio sounds amazing, but maybe I'm biased. Well, yeah, I'm gonna say you are since your paycheck. No, I'm just kidding. Uh no, Nathan's pretty straightforward, man. So if he says it sounds pretty good, I, I believe him. Um Bunga Bunga E biker. Sure, why not? <laughs> uh it says, uh, do you like digital or analog reverb? Uh, what do you suggest is a good reverb pedal? I have a uh, Made Mexico Hendrix Strat. Any suggestions to beef up the pickups? Um, well, I like, if you have the Hendrix, you have the 60s pickups that I like. So those are, I think, beefier than the Fat 50s. The Fat 50 ones are called Fat 50, but they're bright. So I think all the 50s era ones are, so I, I so that's, that's my first thought on your pickups. You can probably get bigger sounding ones, but those are pretty good. Uh, I prefer digital reverb over analog reverb because really analog is spring and the springs are good. I like them in Fender amps uh, and I like all my amps to have spring reverb, but I prefer digital. And the reason is, is because I like the room reverbs and the halls over some of the springs. And so a pedal I, 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 I recommend. Um, there's so many good ones out there that I like, but I'll just tell you the ones I own and that'll make that'll make sense. I have the new neighbor. That's a really good one. My, I, my favorite, which is now overpriced. So I can't, I feel kind of bad suggesting, which is the boss 63 reverb, even though it's based on a spring. I love it, but it is just so ridiculously priced out there. Um, the hall of fame two by, uh, uh, by TC is fantastic. Um, it, there's just, there's no end. If you can't find a reverb in there that you like, it's going to get pretty tough. Um, so that's really great. It has a tone control on it. That's one of the things I like about reverb pedals is when they have a way ability to, to take the high end at the end off the, off the reverb tone. Um, I have the more reverb pedal Skyverb. Uh, it's pretty good. It's nice cause it's tiny and I can use it when I need a little pedal board real fast. That's a good reverb as well. And of course, the new the Fender one, which is really good as well. And all out of all those, um, I think I prefer the uh, the uh, Boss one the most. It's my favorite. But um, as much as I like the Fender one, which is like I said, I would definitely put it in my top five reverbs. I really probably would suggest the Hall of Fame. It's a really it's a it's a really great pedal. Check out. I mean, it's just a fantastic. So 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 there you go. All right. Uh, Hall of Fame Reaver is awesome. See, somebody's already chiming in. Good, good. I'm glad you guys like it. Okay, so we have basically been on for an hour. So let's go ahead and let's do a Chapman guitar, man. Let's uh, let's figure it out. So if you guys are new and you guys missed the beginning, what's going to happen is let me show you right now. So you see what is going on. If you don't know, let me show you. The big news, of course, is that Chapman Guitars is now at Guitar Center. And so the speculation is, what does that mean? Is it going to be the thing that makes Chapman awesome? Is it going to fix Guitar Center? We don't know what the problems are going to be fixed. What we do know is we love guitars and the guitars now are there. So the question of the day is, which guitar should I get of the Chapman Guitars? Now, I'm going to let you guys know not to not to, to, to pull your judgment. The ones I think are most interesting to me is, I, think, I like the ML1, the ML3, um, and... ML2, well, you know what? I like ML2, ML1, ML3, and the Ghost Fret. I'm not big on the one that just looks like a Tele and the one that just looks kind of like a Strat, and I definitely don't want the Baritone. That's the only one I'm um, I'm kind of vetoing is not the Baritone. So I'm curious to see what you guys want. Let me go to you guys, since we're going to, I'm going to stay on that screen. Oh my goodness, guys. Really? <laughs> guys are, <laughs> all right, let's, all right, let's see. And I, I'm not going to be able to count these, but at least I can get the vibe of it. Ready? So we got ML3, ML1, ML3, Ghost Fret, 
ML3, baritone, baritone's not in there, Chuck. <laughs> ML3, ghost fret, ML1, ghost fret, ghost fret. Oh man, ML2 or ML3, okay. ML3, ghost fret, ML3. I'm definitely feeling the ML3 ghost fret vibe. So at this point, could you guys just start voting for those two? Ghost fret, ghost fret, ML3, ghost fret, ghost fret, ML3. That's what we're going to go for, right? So you got to say ghost fret, ghost fret, ghost fret. I meant ML3. I know it's probably annoying me saying it, but I got to say it out loud to hear it. ML3, ghost fret. Man, you guys are almost 50 50 on this. Ghost fret, uh, ghost fret, ghost fret. I definitely feel like ghost fret's winning, guys. ML3 is so close, though. Uh, ML3, ghost fret, ML3, ghost fret. Uh, somebody put a ghost. Joseph, kudos for you for putting a. <laughs> <laughs> for putting the emoji of a ghost uh ghost fret ghost fret ghost fret yeah you know what man you know what i really want the ml3 too but man the go oh man and now there's a lot of ml3s 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 ghost fret ml3s okay so let's go i'm gonna go to the screen hold on a second let me since you guys are looking at your actual what you guys are doing um one of the things i thought about is man doesn't this color look great what do you guys think of this if i go with the the Ghost fret that blended red to black. It just looks, looks, you know, awesome. Uh, any thoughts on that? Uh, ML3, 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 uh, space ghost, ghost fret, ghost fret, ghost fret, ML3, ghost fret. God, you guys, it's really no beers. Uh, the, the, uh, Rebeer, cause it's out of the budget. Uh, red ghost fret, ML3, man, you guys, I know I'm trying to only do this for a few more seconds ml3 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 oh man ml3 might be winning yeah ghost fret ml3 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 yeah let me go back to the ml3 let's look at that okay so the ml3 i don't even remember what these are ml3 oh yeah it's the telly style one you know and i said i'd do red but actually on this one i might like black better right so now we'll that's the so okay so let's how about this black ml3 or the red to black ghost fret, all right? And then that will call it, that'll call it. So ghost fret, ML3, ML3, ghost fret, ML3, ML3. Lawrence Petro said ML3, interesting. ML3, ML3, I think ML3 wins, guys. It's, it's so tight, but it's so close. But ghost fret, red ghost fret, red ghost fret, ML3, ML3, ghost fret. Yeah, this is tough because you guys are almost 50-50 the way it looks. But yeah. Jeffrey said, you said no black. I know, but that red kind of, I don't know. It looks kind of all right. Uh, yeah, that, that you know what it is? I'm not big on the ghost red, but the color on that guitar added to it is really good. Red. Okay, so I see what you guys are saying. If we do it, I'll do the red ML3 or the ghost red and the red to black. So, and um, flip a coin. You know what? There's always a person with some logic. Flip a coin. Let's see if I got a coin. Hold on a second. You know what? That's what we'll do. Let me flip. Let me get a coin. Okay. Because it's... If it, hold on. Hold on a second. Got to find a coin. I have tons of guitar picks. Like every guitar player. Picks, but no money. All right, guys. I got to put it on hold for one second. Okay, so we're back. Ta-da, we're going to flip a point, coin. Uh, heads are ghost fret and tails are ML3. And uh, we'll do it right now. I got a penny. That's all I can find. <laughs> so uh, I don't even know how to do this. I haven't done this as a kid. You, don't, you do, don't do the thing where they flip it over. That doesn't make sense. Just throw it in the air and catch it, right? Or I'll just drop it on my thing. In fact, I'll do it one more time. Just make sure I... It's tails. So tails is the ML3. That's what wins. You know what? And uh, I'm kind of sad either way. <laughs> I really like the ghost spread as well. Uh, so ML3. So we'll do ML3 in red. So that's what we picked. I appreciate you guys. Uh, oh, man. And B Bungie Biker did a $10 thing for ghost fret. Now I feel guilty. Um, hold on a second. Let's see how crazy we are. Hold on one second. 
So you guys talk amongst yourself when I do this. I've never kind of, all right, hold on a second. No, thanks. Uh, guitar Center wants to know if I want coverage <laughs> on the guitar. I'm like, I, I don't, I don't want coverage. And hold on a second. Give me a second. I'm clicking some stuff. I'm doing some secret stuff. I don't want you guys to see my my information. No, thanks. Do you want that? It says yes. Okay. And. Okay. All right. Um, hold on. Yeah, you know what, Bell, Bell N says, do you really need another telly? You know, that's a good point. I know he flipped the coin and everything, but I kind of already feel guilty because the coin has been flipped. Obey the super chat. <laughs> guys, I got to, you know what I hate, I hate is it's so polarized. You guys are half and half. I'm going to just upset half the people. ML3, then sell it to me used. <laughs> I'm in Peoria. Peoria. <laughs> um, the... Uh, how much more to ghost fret? Yeah, the ghost fret's 50 bucks more. You look disappointed. I'm not disappointed. Um, let's see. Uh, the coin was wrong. Ghost fret, ghost fret. You know what? I think I'm going to have to, I hate to do this to you guys. I'm going to make a command decision. And here's the decision I'm going to make. I'm going to do the ghost fret. And there's a reason why. Uh, I The reason why I didn't really think about it in the first place was it was $50 more. And I didn't really want to do that. But here's the big deal. I think that's actual a Chapman guitar, right? Does that make sense? Like, like somebody said, the other one's just a telly. Um, and let me let me tell let me hear. So, yeah. See, hold on a second. You guys are funny. <laughs> hold on a second. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys, all right. We're doing the ghost fret. That's how we'll do it. So. Um, Hold on a second. I just want to confirm it before we do that. And sometimes when I do this, I don't think about the fact that it's going to be kind of boring for you guys when I'm obviously looking for a penny. <laughs> so, um, all right. There's that. Everything's good. Um, Hold on a second. Free shipping. Got to love free shipping. All right. That's all in done. Hold on. It says, oh, I got to pick the. Hold on. It's thinking. Because see, my luck is if I don't do it now, I'll get off the air with you guys and then something will happen. And then, I will, you know, two days will go by. And I want to be fair. We're ordering it today because that'll tell us a, a timeline of how long. Hopefully, it'll be here by next Friday, right? It's still thinking. <laughs> it's 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 got to go to space. So, hold on a second. Okay. And... Okay. All right. And review it. Okay. It's a ghost fret. It's red. It says black blood. I, I, I'll be honest with you on, on this part. I never would have thought in a million years, the ghost fret is the guitar I would, you know, kind of drawn to. And I wasn't looking at it at all. I was thinking the entire time, but I don't have that style of guitar. I don't have any kind of pointy guitars like that. And um, it'd be really cool. And I know that's kind of his thing, right? So, all right. So, uh, so let, we'll, we will see how does it work out. Hopefully uh, it works out great because I'd rather have a positive experience than a negative one, if you can imagine. So that's cool. As always, guys, this has been fun. A little interesting kind of way to do this. So. Uh, oh, here's a good question. Matt, uh, Maddie says, uh, Maddie, Matt, oh, dude, you, I got to like this name. Maddie, Matt, 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 Maddie, Matt, Matt, Matt says, hey, Phil. Uh, is a spring reverb tank spring reverb tank uh, like a something that needs to be broken in like a speaker? Uh, no, no, uh, not in my experience. They they work fine. Um, they're really brittle, so they break. 
right? So they're really a pass fail kind of device. They work until they break. And then when they break, they don't work anymore. So, so, uh, yeah, Space Jazz is saying, see, I, I don't have an Explorer, right? I, I don't. So, uh, Mark Ray says, Phil, what's my favorite guitar pick right now? Uh, I change sometimes. I'm sure a lot of you are like that. It's been for a while, the Dava picks. So, and if you're not familiar with them, the only thing that's interesting to mention is that they come in all these colors, but it doesn't matter. They're all the same thickness and they're all the same pick. They just come in different colors, but I use the Dava picks. And uh, if I don't use Dava picks, sometimes I use the pure tones that I like a lot. Um, so there you go. Um, and, um, and that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. All right. As always, guys, uh, this is a great show. I really appreciate you guys hanging out. There was a lot of you guys today and, uh, and I, I had fun and it was good to talk about some positive stuff and, and do some cool stuff. And I look forward to talking to you next week. I will give updates, uh, when the guitar comes in, I will not wait to do the review. If it comes in, as soon as it comes in, I will do the review and put it out. Uh, so especially if it comes out before Friday and then we can talk about it on Friday. So, um, so there you go. So, as always, guys, I want to thank you guys so much for your time. And uh, oh, you know what I almost forgot? I better tell you guys because I messed this up last month. Last thing to mention, the Telly shirts are now available for March. <laughs> See, I'm going to get in so much trouble for not doing this. I did it last month, too. Let me do right there. So, so you guys know, we talked about this last week. Every month, we're doing a different shirt. So you can always get the Strat style shirt all throughout the year. Nothing's changed. Last month, it was the Gibson shirt. So you know, if you didn't get the Gibson style shirt, it's today is the last day for the Gibson shirt. It runs off until this afternoon and then, and then it's over. And then starting today, you can get the Telly shirt. So if you're interested in the Telly shirt, there it is. Uh, so I just thought I'd tell you that because I forgot last month and I didn't say anything and you know, so now I'm just saying it. So there you go. You have options. If you're interested in trying to find a shirt with your particular guitar on it to be a little personalized for you, um, I would do that. So as always, thank you guys again so much. Have a great uh, weekend and uh, know your gear. <laughs>